Hey guys, it's Adventure. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at SimWorks Studio's new RV8. Now this includes both the RV8 and RV8A, so Tail Dragger and the Tricycle Gear versions. And we have both analog and we have digital cockpit versions, so glass and steam gauges. And two and three bladed prop versions. Now the RV8 is of course a tandem two seat single engine low wing home build, which of course sorted kit form by Vans Aircraft. It's of course uh, developed from the RV4, and it's a bit bigger than that one, including a wider wingspan. Now, Richard Van Grusen, Grusven developed the RV8 as an updated version of that. It first went in 1995. So far, 1,611 have been built as of November 2021, which is a pretty darn good number. Now, in terms of uh, specifications, based on a version using an IO360, which this one does, although this specs are for 200 horsepower, not the 180, I believe, that's in the version we're using, Ballpark is 190 max speed, 180 knot cruise, 50-ish knot uh, stall speed, range is about 800 nautical miles, and that's on the slightly bigger version. So that's the uh, fuel-injected 200 horsepower version. Now, the one we're getting, of course, like I said, has the tail dragger and trike versions. We've got custom liveries, we have analog, and we have uh, glass cockpits. And 180 horsepower IO360 with different sounds based on whether or not the props are two or three blade version, which is a nice nuance. The flight data in terms of performance is tested by actual RV8 pilots and owners. Compatible with the PMS and TDS GTN units. Useful. You can hot swap in the analog version. The other one you can't hot swap, but you can put a mod in for it. We have flutter animations from PropWash. Animated AC vents, which is very important, of course. Animated exits and baggage compartments. Now, I paid for this myself for the record. And this is £15 or so. $15, I think it is. On their store it's also in the marketplace so let's go and take a look shall we now we're flying the two-bladed version today of the tail dragger we'll try the trike as well and we'll fly the digital cockpit version of the trike simworks modeling is always very nice it's not very complicated but it's also a very simple plane so that's fine but everything is sharp crisp and neat and quite pretty looking now, there's a baggage compartment right there. You can only access this from the cockpit camera, so you'd have to go to like this, reach over there, and do that. And this is up here. And so we have the baggage compartment there. We have the cockpit open too. It's quite a small plane when you think about it. Now, we are at uh, Bad Neunar Airweiler here in the Artel in Germany, just to the west of the Rhine in NRW, North Rheinwald. So we, Nordrheinwald even, sorry. And we are going to get this thing going. We're going to head up the valley here to some of my favourite little spots to visit. With the cockpit open for the time being. Okay. So batteries, avionics on there. Uh, auxiliary battery, main battery. Okay. Everything is good where that needs to be. Raise the flaps because they are, of course, down initially. So you do have to originally close open them. We'll close them even so because they come down over time. And they'll always start that way around. We'll close this off here. Okay. So the systems are coming online there. That's fine. Fuel pump will go to the left tank there. So make sure our stuff is forward where it needs to be. Crack the throttle. Not a particularly complicated engine, of course, with the IO360, so that's fine. There we go, turn the, GP, the transponder on as well. We do have an autopilot function, we have autopilot power. We've got panel lighting here. And we'll just go to night time to see what this looks like here, real quick. Not a ton of lighting from the panel light, but at the same time, it's also a very small aircraft. The digital lighting for the actual stuff is pretty good, though. Generally kind of on the low end in terms of lighting. Fair enough. Okay, we'll close those off. And we'll get the mags on here. Clear prop. Oh, go away. Why do you keep doing this? I turn it on one time because I want a lazy flight and it does it for me. Okay, we'll close this bad boy off. Now, it's not just pull it forwards. We do have to make sure we latch this. If we aren't like a fighter, we're not leaving this open for our takeoff roll. 
What's cool though is you can quickly hot swap back, by the way, to the... Where is it? Here. To the rear seat. No instruments here though, so you wouldn't want to fly from here. It's definitely a passenger seat though. Okay, everything good there. VFR code is in. Transponder is on. Excellent. Everything is looking fine here. Oil temps coming up where we want it to be. Pressure's good. Take it to 1800 on the RPM. On the manifold, sorry. 1600 RPM. Everything is green. Okay. Turn on my noggin here. And we'll get ourselves going. We're on the grass here at uh, Bat Noina. Little airport right up on the hill above the, uh, the town. A bit of a chonker in terms of performance, this airport, actually. Don't fly out of here very often, but I like the area, unfortunately. Taxiing is a bit fun with the uh, high nose and the tail dragger. That's tail dragger life for you. She's not too bad on the brakes. You can really stand on those brakes and it doesn't actually try to tip over because the CG is quite aft behind the gear. So it's a nice touch for those of you who aren't super familiar with tail draggers. Well, she has a lot of power and she'll start to roll on takeoff. So you want to make sure you're giving it some opposing input to kind of control that. So we're going to give it some left stick here for takeoff. A little bit of aileron in there. Oh. And the runway dips away because we just did an intersection departure and the runway drops down for the glider runway. So should have thought before doing that one. But we're up here. No problems. Flaps it in. There's Bat Noina and Ervala. Down below us. Beautiful historic uh, city, medieval city walls down there as well, actually. And there's a Roman villa down here somewhere. I can't remember. Should be just down on the right, I think. Yes, there it is. Lots of vineyards down the, uh, the Artel. But there's the... Uh, they built the road junction here around the Roman villa. There's a whole thing built over the ruins to protect it. They were doing some road, uh, road building for the bypass and they discovered the Roman ruins. So they built a building to protect it and there's a whole villa's ruins in there. Uh, specifically that. Doesn't look like that in real life, but it's down there. So look it up. So we'll come around the corner here towards Dernau. Of course, this whole area devastated in the floods uh, a couple of years ago. Absolutely tragic, beautiful, beautiful part of Germany. And even now, the railway that runs down this valley is still actually not rebuilt fully after the flood damage. A lot of rebuilding still happening. Tragic, tragic uh, occurrence there. I have a friend who uh, was one of the responders from the fire brigade to these incidents. There's a little village of Dernau below us. And Rech, Rech over there, and Mish lost just across the ridge. Some of these buildings don't look like they're meant to, but <laughs> close enough. Like all those ones down here, all that's meant to be uh, like single story industrial stuff, but what the heck. So we'll just head over Mish lost and turn around, and we'll come back around for an approach. So, in terms of flight, it's very stable, manageable. It's nice having a tandem seating arrangement because you get that kind of little fighter feeling. So it's quite a couple of fighter liveries on there. An old like RAF one is a Tusker GM and one. It's common to see this in military liveries because it's like a my little personal fighter and kit plane. But it's fun to fly. It's not a particularly stressful aircraft. Very responsive, of course, and is aerobatic. Did I put the smoke on? Did I press that properly? There we go. Whee! 
Gee, look at that billowy, beautiful smoke. Oh, God. I... Mm, yeah, it's a treat. I'm dead. <laughs> this is what happens when I try to do aerobatics in third person. It goes horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, we don't do that. We're not going to do that, are we? Lots of smoke. Right, let's put this back in. I should stick to what I can do, and that's not aerobatics. Okay, so back over back. No, no, here. The airport should be soft to our left. Look out for the viaduct. Nürburgring's over there, by the way. In case you're wondering. And the Rhine is that way. But you can just about see Old Father Rhine. Right there. So we'll bring her around here and get set up for our approach. There's the airport in front of us. So we'll do a... We'll kind of as our downwind. We'll turn for base and come in for an approach. She's not bad for the price. For what you get in terms of two and three blade prop versions. Uh, the fact you get... The different avionics versions, you've got an autopilot, you've got transponder, GPS variants. You get a whole bunch of stuff for a bargain price, realistically. The market today with what people are charging for some aircraft, considering we have, and I'll have the video up for you this week actually, uh, Vitavia releasing their Yak 52, also a single engine aerobatic aircraft, it's a two seater in tandem, uh, for £20, and comparatively, it sucks. Where's the airport? There's the airport, right. Okay. Turn this way. Forgot the viaduct and also not sure why that bit of town is bonked with texture, but oh well. Okay. So they're quite slippery vans, so we need to be aware of that. Not a big drama, but something to be aware of because they don't tend to slow down very much when you want them to. Like my throttle is closed here. And she ain't going to slow down anytime soon, so I'm going to encourage her to slow down. By using the side of the aircraft as a brake. Look at how quickly it slows down when you force it to. Okay, we'll let her slip out of that. And little power whilst we turn here. Launch the flaps over the autobahn and I'm rushing this because I want to get the trike out as well. So I'm not being quite as pretty as I should be with this approach because I want to go and get the trike out. I don't want this video to take forever, so a little quicker than I should probably be. Cutting a couple of corners, but we've made it in the end to where we need to be. With the flaps out, she's absolutely a barn door. I'm going to be aware of that and that's my store horn. It's a bit of a carrier deck landing tier to the airport. We'll hold her off. Beautiful. There we go. Flaps in. And we'll make the first turn off. Perfect. Almost like I planned this. So we're going to go get the tricycle via version and we'll take a look at how she performs. So here we are guys in the tricycle gear version. This, of course, is the, I believe it's the 8A, yes, 8A, the tricycle gear version here. So, obviously, different perspective on the ground, different angle, and turning around next fuel box is going to be fun for us, but we'll try. Otherwise, very much the same. So, we're all basically ready to start the engine, so it's a case of 1, 2, 3, clear prop. Echo Delta Romeo Alpha oh, my God. Delta, Dude, Hotel, quiet. I... Okay, parking brake released. Stand on the tow brake here and try to get this thing turned around on one wheel. It will. Like a glove. And we'll back taxi this time for our takeoff so we actually have some room. Immediately far easier taxi position viewpoint here on the aircraft, making things a lot nicer for you. A um, little bouncy, in fact, which is quite nice when you see aircraft that aren't just these static, rolling, smooth vehicles on the runway surface. So rather than having the, um, I suppose, angle attack indicator on the panel here, it's actually on your, above your glare shield. See, this is how much room we didn't use last time. 
<laughs> what I'm really liking about this, by the way, is the ambient affecting effects of this. As you saw, the runway side, taxiway side lighting was reflecting around our canopy hoop. And just then you saw the red light play across the Garmin G5 thing there. Little nuance of that way. You've got that kind of global kind of interaction between the environmentals and the actual inside of the cockpit. It makes it just feel suddenly much more placed in the aircraft. It makes the whole thing feel much more alive, doesn't it? So flaps are good. So let's rock and roll. Pulling a little bit left here on takeoff. This is a three blade, of course, rather than the two. And she zooms away from the ground. A lot more go, even earlier in the flight. Pull that back. Let's get our prop set properly. And she climbs out perfectly, but that's a squared off there, in fact. The triple blade definitely has a lot more pull when it comes to uh, climb performance. So that's something I've definitely noticed here. My Vila down there. Our Vila even. Lots of smoke like in this one. We'll try not to do crazy aerobatics, but we have that smoke. Quite pretty smoke, actually. Good vol voluminous material. Oh, there we go. Whee! That actually was pretty good. Oh, and we're into a spin. Not crashing this time, thank you. We'll pull this in. There we go. Right, let's get you behaving yourself, shall we? And up we come. Responsiveness is very similar. Obviously, she's going to be slightly different in terms of speed with that nose wheel going in the airflow. A little bit slower, typically, for trike gear variations of the same aircraft. So the tail drag mods are things like 172s and 152s actually give you a little bit of speed. Because you are slightly more aerodynamic. So just pot around here a little bit and we'll come back around. No need for a big long flight with this one as a test run. We're just showing you how the aircraft functions and operates. Obviously, down here are all your breakers. They all function, of course. I don't need a starter, do I? Because it's out. We shouldn't pull some of those controls, but <laughs> we'll function just fine. So we'll bring around and we'll set up for a bit of a longer out straighted approach here. Probably try and get our angular approach slightly better on this one. I always find approaching this particular airport a little bit harder because that plateau effect tends to kick in a little bit. And we know there's the, the bridge and the autobahn, so we need to make sure we're coming in, dropping down a little bit over here. And then down, turning to our left for base to final. Letting it slow down here is important because she's very, very slippery with clean configuration. But as soon as she gets a little bit of dirt going in there, she starts to really just bleed off all that speed. That's just turning to final. I'm going to go full flaps again because I want to try and bleed as much as possible. Keep my power on here just to ride this down. Watch my angler attack there. Right. It was 66, that's feeling pretty good for now. So I'll just let it drift down. These are the first two times I've actually flown this aircraft in the sim. Other than one quick load in to check out uh, things and compare to the manual. So you're watching my first two landings. This will hopefully be a better one. Invariably, the second one always is. I was a little bit low and slow on the first one and looking at the wrong part of the runway. A little bit to the right here, so we'll drift left. I'm pretty sure I also remembered that the RVs are very slippery late in that flight, which is never a good time to realise you're going to be particularly slippery in that aircraft. I will say the advanced G3X system we now have um, is definitely an improvement for aircraft that use it, so I quite like this conversion with the glass here because they've been touchscreen, of course. 
little bit of flutter there coming in. And touchdown. Little bit high on the nose, I'll admit there. I thought I was coming in like a flaring like a space shuttle. I want to derotate the aircraft. God. <laughs> oh, this is what happens when I'm being an idiot. There we go. Maybe we'll catch some of that reflection on the instruments and things. Now, you see a bit of the glass there. You might see it here. You can see it on the edge of the uh, G3X here. The materials you use are actually picking up the ambient light very nicely. I don't see this on all the aircraft. Like, this is not something I always tend to see. It happens with some, but not all. Like, right now, you're catching it lighting up the actual hoop there of the aircraft. If you can see that, it's quite subtle. But the actual lighting from outside is affecting the interior, which I don't always see. Some aircraft do it, some don't. And for some reason, this hangar's too far forward when it should be behind the tower building there. I don't know why it's in to eating it alive. Perhaps the hangar was hungry. Right, we'll pull onto the grass here and call this a parking job. So 15 bucks, do I think this is worth it? Absolutely. This is worth every penny for 15 bucks. You're getting yourself a nice little aircraft that is well made, well textured, well detailed. Bunch of liveries. There's tons of third party ones already available for you on places like flightsim.to and it's fun to fly. Great for little GA sightseer and tourer and good for aerobatics. For the price, well worth it. And now with a G3X that is much more advanced, giving us much more options and analog for those of us that like that, it appeals to more people. I definitely recommend the three blade though. That one definitely has a bit more grunt to it and definitely has a bit more kind of power and acceleration. So, well not power, but applies the power better, I would probably say. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.